let's talk more about what net zero really means. We're joined by Jamie Alexander, the director of Drawdown Labs, to talk about ways we can reach net zero and how realistic it might be to do so. But let's start with what exactly is net zero? I think a lot of people hear these terminologies used, but don't necessarily know what they mean. Right. Um, well, I think it's really critical that we all understand, you know, what this jargon means because we're all in this together. We all have a role to play and we should have a shared understanding of what we need to do to address the climate crisis. Um, so let's start with this. Um, we know what's causing climate change and that's this ever accelerating buildup of greenhouse gases in our atmosphere that act as this thick blanket that we have now around the planet. And that's throwing all of our systems out of balance. So we need to stop the sources of this greenhouse gas pollution because every minute that it continues spilling into the atmosphere worsens and accelerates climate change. However, there are things that absorb carbon from the atmosphere. Nature, in fact, absorbs about 40% of all of the emissions that, that we put into the atmosphere every year. That's trees and oceans and peat bogs and mangroves. Um, and it's critical that we protect and restore these ecosystems so they continue to do that. So net zero emissions will be achieved when all greenhouse gas emissions released by humans are counterbalanced by the removal of greenhouse gas emissions from the atmosphere to equal out zero. Um, so there are several problems with this logic. One of them is that, you know, these net zero targets are pretty far in the future. Um, by and large, you know, 2050, 2040, um, India today committing to net zero by 2070. But we're already experiencing dramatic climate impacts today, um, you know, wildfires and floods and extreme weather events. Um, and that just shows the urgency of minimizing temperature increase as much as possible and as quickly as possible and not something that can wait until 2050. So, Jamie, a lot of companies say they're going to net zero by, say, planting trees. And trees are great, don't get me wrong, but they can also be a little bit less permanent than I think we want them to be. You know, a storm can come through, a tornado can come through and tear out all the trees and you're starting from, from zero again. What do you tell companies or groups that are looking at Drawdown Labs in that pie chart that they can all attack uh, the different ways of, uh, of kind of eliminating carbon? Where do, we, where do we begin this conversation? The most important thing to remember here um, is that the sooner emissions peak and the lower they are at that point, the better our outcomes are in terms of destructive climate impacts. So we need to focus on absolute reductions. Net zero um, was intended to be a global target, you know, one that the entire planet would achieve by 2050. So for any one company or country to kind of lift that up as a leadership position doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because 2050 is actually the deadline. It's the due date. It's when we need to have already achieved net zero as a, as a planet, not just the leaders, but the entire planet. Um, and it's important to mention that, you know, a lot of these a lot of these companies um, are responsible for the vast majority of these emissions. And so countries like the U.S. and large corporations have a, dis a disproportionate responsibility to make bigger and bolder moves so that they can make up for the rest of the rest of the world that that may take a bit longer. Well, Jamie Alexander, thank you so much. We love to keep the conversation going. Um, the director of Drawdown Labs, thank you so much for your time. Uh, something that we're watching. Uh, there's even things you can do and, and in your own home.